Hello, everybody. Welcome to a Law and the New Order workshop. This is a part of our Catalyst proposal from Little Fish Foundation. Uh, we're working with our uh, attorneys uh, from Tevetola Legal who have been investigating a few topics that kind of uh, are really important for uh, the work that we do uh, in decentralized organizations. And today's topic will be on uh, DAO legal frameworks. So uh, as a, uh, a hopeful DAO, Little Fish Foundation wants to understand uh, how, uh, how and why we should be inc incorporate under what conditions. And uh, through that, uh, our attorneys have been researching for us and uh, for everybody else, uh, what should we consider? When should you consider incorporating? How you should do it uh, for your DAO? And with that, I'm going to pass it on to uh, Botuan and Asena. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I would like to uh, firstly share my screen if I am available. Let's check. Yes, we yes concluded a power presentation for you. So we will just go forward with this. Botuan, please take the lead. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, today, tonight, uh, with Asana Ömer, we will be talking on DAOs and applicable legislation to them. Uh, before starting tonight's workshop, we would like to thank everyone who support us and our project, uh, especially Shakan and Jam for their uh, support. Uh, next slide, please, uh, Asana. I did move forward. Can you see? No. Okay, wait, hold on. Let me share my screen again. Uh, now possible. we were seeing uh, your mouse move. Okay, how about now? Can you see? No. No? No. Part four, do you have a question? For, for a okay, let me. Uh, I don't have a question. I just want to, to say that I'm uh, very, very jealous and impressed of your Obsidian notebook. Oh. I love what you all are doing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Uh, should we wait for the presentation or shall I just keep going? Well, I cannot share right now. It says host disabled SND screen sharing, so I cannot share. Hmm moment okay i so think i can try. make a host let's see no could you guys share it with me maybe i can share it for you guys sorry for this. well that would be actually great oh, <laughs> you can try again yeah i, I can change the yeah? settings yeah okay. all right can you see now yes yes Perfect. okay let's get started uh, we are going to start with general features of DAOs, examining the advantages and disadvantages uh, they have to offer. After that, we are going to conclude that chapter with discussion, uh, why do we prefer DAOs? Uh, in other chapter, we will be talking on possible legal structures uh, that are applicable for DAOs, uh, such as partnerships, limited liability partnerships, uh, limited partnerships, and limited liability corporations, also known as LLCs. Uh, after that, Asena will take over and tell us about regulations throughout the world. And uh, finally, we will focus on whether a DAO should seek a legal entity or not. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, to start with, DAO stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. They are a type of organization that is built upon the smart contracts and blockchain technology. Uh, it offers a new type of business model where the power is uh, not concentrated on a, a single point, a group or person or family, uh, but generally it is distributed amongst its members. Uh, Hard fork said something, I guess. Uh, okay, I will just keep going. Uh, Asana, next slide, please. Uh, it's hard to tell the exact market cap of all the DAO tokens there is, but uh, however, it is safe to say that uh, market cap market cap of top DAO tokens are now over $21 billion, uh, considering the fact that DAOs are mostly in, the, in a 
development phase and the fact that they are relatively new. Uh, 21 billion dollars uh, is a quite uh, respected amount, I guess. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, prominent features of DAOs actually form its uh, name. DAOs are aimed to be decentralized, autonomous, and organizational. Uh, they are most operated on blockchain. The way blockchain technology works and the smart contracts uh, make DAOs decentralized. These smart contracts that we are talking about uh, determine the governance and structure of a DAO thanks to the wonders of blockchain technology uh, and therefore smart contracts. Uh, functioning of a DAO can be determined beforehand, and the founder may not come uh, may not be the complete shot cutters in the DAO. Uh, its decentralized nature also enables the distribution of power amongst its members. Uh, secondly, uh, by the way, we are going to examine smart contracts in a uh, in a different workshop so i just leave it that way uh, secondly one of the most important features of dao is it being autonomous uh, even though DAOs don't have a governing body in principle uh, they have to be able to operate and function somehow uh, the governing principle and functions of DAOs are generally imprinted on the smart contracts and after its establishment uh, a dao can operate and function uh, mostly without needing the approval or initiation of its founders. The autonomous body can exercise its duties and functions independently uh, to some extent, and uh, therefore it becomes an entity which is independent of its founders or uh, members, uh, which automatically functions in accordance, in accordance with the uh, underlying codes that uh, DAO is built upon. And since the rules of DAO are embedded in the codes, and no ad administration is uh, generally needed. Uh, it eliminates the barriers of uh, bureaucracy and hierarchy, hierarchy that we face in classic corporations. Uh, DAO's third and uh, perhaps most meaningful feature, at least for me, is uh, being organization. Is being an organization, uh, even though DAOs are built on codes and smart contracts, they are just uh, more than codes and smart contracts. Uh, those are the entities that people join together to fulfill a purpose, its ability to unite people across the globe in something that uh, people want to work on together is simply uh, fascinating, fascinating in my opinion. Uh, that's why uh, those are just an, those are not just an organization that is built on smart contracts, but rather an exceptional and innovative international organization that extinguishes the distance between people, nations, and persons. Uh, next slide, please, Asena. Uh, why do we prefer DAOs? Uh, first of all, people need, want, and uh, generally long for many things. Uh, despite its search for independence, a huge part of being human is being dependent on each, each other. Uh, if not for the cooperation and the ability of humankind to work together, uh, many wonderful features of our civilization would have not been established. Uh, throughout the history of humankind, kind of nations or group of people that managed to form an effective, practical, and relatively fair organizations uh, thrive, prospered, and overcome obstacles. Um, many things and concepts that were revolutionary and innovative for their time eventually uh, got old, became old-fashioned. Old our current understanding of corporations and organizations struggle to address the needs of innovative projects and people. Uh, also, as the corruption and bureaucratic formalities increase, uh, the number of laws, number of regulations increase, and uh, the amount of work needed to comply with them increase, the efficiency of the organization decreased, a legal and economic structure of the classic corporations uh, and organizations start to be questioned. Uh, current legal quest, uh, legal structures for organizations, uh, such as partnerships and uh, companies, are wholly regulated. Uh, rights and obligations of said organizations are strictly set for by the states, governments. Uh, for example, uh, managing the treasury or voting rules, uh, procedures, almost all of the features 
uh, and functions of an organization is uh, now decided in people's stead by the uh, governments and states. So it's not a flexible uh, structure. Applicable classic law lacks, lacks the appropriate solutions, uh, which is need, needed for new technologies. Almost everyone is complaining about the fact that uh, judicial processes take so long. Uh, however, so far, nothing seems to change. Sometimes judicial processes are carry, carried so inefficiently, at least in Tur Turkey, to the point that solving the dispute and disagreement uh, becomes even more expensive than the dispute itself. Uh, now it's in the, it's the age of technology and digitalization. Uh, a new type of organization is needed. Artificial boundaries that are foreseen by the states uh, should be uh, extinguished. People shall come uh, together. Uh, and uh, those really have a potential to fulfill that gap. Uh, we can move forward, Asana. OK, first of all, uh, this is a uh, Table and uh, first of all, due to its digital and technological nature, uh, DAOs generally cut across limitations set by geographical difficulties. Uh, people all across the world who don't know or trust each other uh, now may come together under an organization that serves a common goal. Uh, in that sense, individuals become a member of a DAO and work with another or uh, even invest in a project. Uh, even though getting rid of limitations that are set forth uh, by the borders is sometimes perceived favorable, but uh, actually it is not always the case. Uh, in the classical system, it is hard for individuals to invest in overseas projects or companies. Uh, it's quite scary and challenging uh, because the law system is different, uh, procedures are different, the language is different, so uh, it is, uh, and it's an obstacle to invest in overseas projects. But uh, thanks to the underlying technology of DAOs, individuals uh, can and uh, will know the procedures and consequence consequences of each action beforehand, uh, because its uh, nature enables it. Uh, can you move forward, Asana? Uh, uh, I just talked about that. One more, please. Huh. Uh, rules of DAO are predefined and transparent, uh, also ver verifiable. Uh, since the rules are always clearly verifiable and the member will join the DAO by accepting the rules of the DAO, uh, more importantly, these actions and consequences are generally executed automatically and autonomously by the DAO itself. Uh, that's how the DAO is offered to solve trust problems of its members uh, or amongst its members. Unfortunately, there are uh, more than countable cases where corrupt managers or founders of a company fraud its com investors or embezzled assets of the company. Uh, we see it every day uh, and DAOs has a uh, solution for that. Uh, blockchain, thanks to the blockchain, the transactions and accounting of DAOs uh, generally recorded in this blockchain, which enable the members of DAO to audit and follow transactions of the DAO uh, so they can constantly check uh, how DAO is doing, uh, what assets they, it owns, or what transactions it concludes, etc. Uh, this way, it offers a uh, relatively more trusted accountability. Uh, Asana, we can move forward. Huh. Uh, as you know, it's always cheaper to think of something rather than doing it. Uh, in business life or in almost every aspect of life, it is same. Uh, people with ideas generally lack the necessary capital to, re to realize their projects, to perform their project. Uh, DAOs has a potential to uh, solve this problem. Uh, even the individuals with relatively small capitals are incentivized to invest in these projects, uh, and it's possible and therefore 
uh, in my opinion, in my opinion, fascinating to raise a great amount of capital out of uh, small amounts put by many individuals uh, over a minute. Uh, Asana, we can move forward. Uh, in comparison with classic corporations, DAOs have a relatively democratic decision-making process. Uh, since the power to manage the DAO is generally distributed and uh, its technological feature makes it easier for most people to participate in process of decision making, uh, decentralized governance uh, makes it more uh, reliable and possible. Uh, we can move forward as an next, please. Uh, also, many corporate decisions are meant to be kept private and unknown uh, to its uh, competitors or even to its uh, shareholders, uh, members. Uh, this advantage allows businesses to stay ahead of the competition uh, by keeping their data and strategic plans hidden. Uh, in contrast, a decentralized decision-making process allows information to be widely accessible, uh, making it more difficult to keep information confidential, uh, at least within the DAO. Uh, to ensure confidentiality to some extent, uh, yes, DAOs may prefer or use private blockchains uh, that prevent unauthor unauthorized uh, access. But uh, even though they use, even if they use private blockchains, the usage, usage of blockchain may provide some confidential confidentiality against outsiders. But uh, in principle, the information regarding the decisions that are taken and executed uh, by a DAO through smart contracts and blockchain will still be widely accessible to its members. Uh, this this situation may undesirable for a DAO because sometimes there is such information which is meant to be kept hidden even from the members of a DAO. Uh, we can move forward, Asana. Uh, cyber security, uh, as the digitalization continues, more uh, it is possible to face new cyber security challenges. Uh, in that regard, DAOs may be more susceptible to fraud and hacking or uh, hijacking the data uh, and etc. more than traditional organizations. And since their very existence and function is based upon smart contracts and codes, uh, software, there are, they are more vulnerable to cyber attacks. Uh, because DAOs are decentralized, no central authority is responsible for its uh, security. Uh, that may uh, that that is uh, one of the challenges uh, a DAO can uh, face. If hackers gain an access to organizations' computer systems, uh, they may steal funds or user data or any kind of data. We can move forward. And finally, the lack of defined regulatory structure. Uh, and it is the primary barrier uh, when it comes to DAOs. The majority of countries throughout the globe have not properly stated their legal position on DAOs. Uh, they are still silent. And this may impede organizations' quick development, their worldwide character and international membership make this scenario much more difficult. Uh, uniform or almost identical legislation throughout the world would hasten the emergence of DAOs, uh, but uh, it is unfortunately very unlikely, at least it seems so. We can move forward, Asena. Now uh, I will talk about legal structures for DAOs. Uh, we can move one more, Asena. Ah, DAOs as partnerships. Uh, in general terms, a partnership is a relationship uh, between persons who agree to share the profits and loss of a business, uh, which these persons come together to carry it out. So uh, a group of people shall come together and they shall agree upon the share of profits and loss of a business. And therefore, persons who willfully enter into such relationships are called partners. Firstly, if a person or entity acquired or was granted tokens in the DAO uh, 
for example, through an airdrop or as a payment for supplying goods or services to the DAO or somebody else, uh, that person or entity may become a partner of the DAO. Uh, similarly, if a person sold all of their DAO tokens, governance tokens, they will no longer be a partner and a new partnership uh, would be formed and remained uh, between remaining partners, token holders, and token holders and therefore partners might enter and um, depart on daily basis. In the possibility of DAO having more than one type of token, uh, every token holder may not be qualified to be considered as a partner. Uh, if there are more than more type more than one type of DAO token, uh, it is possible that some of the tokens don't make you a partner. Uh, the type and nature of token is uh, crucial in this regard. Tokens that enable its holders to have a say in the decision-making process of the DAO or the tokens that entitle its holders to have a share of the profits and losses of the DAO uh, would be eligible to be qualified as a member, uh, as a partner. On the other hand, uh, if the tokens uh, don't give rights to its holders uh, that partners generally have, then uh, those tokens would not be considered as considered as governance tokens, and uh, ho holders of such tokens would not be uh, considered as partners. Uh, and since the partners are considered agent considered as agents of each other and the organization itself, uh, they have the power to bind other partners and the organization as well. Since partnerships do not have a uh, separate legal entity personality, uh, they cannot own assets or concrete contracts, and other organizations may be hesitant to concrete contracts with the DAO. All right. Are we good? All good. Sorry. No problem. Uh, and more importantly, partners are jointly and severally accountable for the DAO's debts, obligations, and errors. Uh, it's a huge liability. It's very important to consider. Uh, each partner is responsible for and entitled to debts and obligations of the partnerships, partnership as well as its profits and rights. Uh, that much liability may result in the liquidation of the personal assets of a partner uh, it's very risky. Uh, finally, the way that partners define themselves uh, in such relations doesn't affect the eligibility of a DAO to be considered as a partnership. Keep that in mind. Uh, just because you don't call yourself a partnership, it doesn't mean that you are not a uh, partnership. Keep that in mind, please. Asana, we can move forward. DAOs as LPs and LLPs. Uh, limited partnerships are again a type of a partnership. However, uh, in limited partnerships, liability of at least one partner is limited. While in general partnerships, every partner is personal liable of the debt liable uh, for the debts and obligations of the partnership. In limited partnerships, LPs, there is at least one general partner that has unlimited liability. And limited liability partnerships, LLPs, on the other hand, uh, are also a type of partnerships in which all of its partners have limited liability. Uh, in comparison with limited partnerships, as a rule, uh, every partner of the limited liability partnership has the right and possibility to be involved in decision-making procedures. Uh, and... Uh, in limited partnerships, generally, only the general partner has the right to make decisions, uh, whereas the limited partner only makes a financial contribution. Uh, since LLPs and LPs provide a limitation on the liability of its partners, they appear as an eligible candidate to address the shortcomings of partnerships. Additionally, the fact that they, are, they uh, possess a separate legal entity uh, enables them to conduct legal affairs, such as owning property, bank account, uh, becoming a part of a, 
contracts, signing contracts, etc. Uh, we can move forward and uh, also as an uh, give more details on the uh, application of such uh, cases. So I'm just uh, laying out the basics. Um, okay, DAO has limited liability corporations, also known as LLCs. And since some DAOs have been registered as LLCs in the United States, uh, this section concentrates mainly on them. Uh, LLCs are controlled at the state level rather than the federal level. Uh, so the law regarding LLCs may differ by uh, state in the United States, but uh, not by huge difference. As a result, there is no consistent handling of LLCs in the United States, but uh, again, it is not uh, big of a deal. While LLCs are not incorporated corporations, uh, they are registered entities that provide their members limited liability. Those members are individually accountable for the LLC's obligations. However, uh, they may still be liable for their own torts, uh, of course, such as if a member designed a smart contract poorly and uh, if a uh, debt or harm res results from that, that person who caused the uh, tort will be liable. Uh, those uh, and since LLCs are regulated uh, differently by each state, there is no uniform set of rules regarding those, as I stated before. Uh, LLCs provide a substantial amount of limitation on the liability of those members. On the other hand, they are subject to a whole regulated structure, uh, which limits the flexibility of those. Uh, additionally, due to their uh, profiting nature, LLCs are not an applicable legal structure for non-profit DAOs. Uh, however, despite downsides, LLCs still appear as the most appropriate legal structure for for-profit DAOs. Uh, that's it from me. Asena, you can take over. Hi, everyone, again. I don't know how many we are right now, but I can see the <laughs> screen. I'm just seeing the presentation. Just saying hi in case. Uh, I would like to talk about the legislations uh, around the world. So maybe perhaps uh, we should start with Turkey as Turkish lawyers. It's perhaps best to start with the regulations in Turkey. So in Turkey, there are two main branches in corporate law. One is equity company and the other one is limited liability corporations. But um, the regulations must be clear since there are no regulations regarding DAOs yet, uh, you can't establish an equity company or LLC in Turkey. But uh, there is a type in Turkish law which we can consider DAOs under this section. This type is actually the partnerships that, uh, sorry if you're getting notifications from my <laughs> screen. Um, uh, these, type, uh, these types are partnerships as Batuan mentioned before. You can establish an ordinary partnership as simply as concluding an agreement between the partners. So there is no specific requirement or necessity to the agreement you would like to conclude. Um, this agreement is not required to be written as well. So a DAO can uh, easily be formed as a partnership in Turkey, but uh, you know, as liability wise, it is not a perfect solution for a DAO to establish a partnership here. Uh, I would move forward with Wyoming because I think it's the best solution that we have for a DAO to seek a legal entity under the act they passed. Um, Wyoming is the first state to pass a law allowing the establishment of DAO in the world. Um, Wyoming recognizes DAOs as limited liability corporations. So uh, any law which is applicable to LLCs is also applicable to DAOs. So according to the regulation, DAOs are recognized as a company can own physical assets, real world assets, can carry out legal affairs, transactions, employ workers and have a bank account and et cetera. So um, long story short, those can operate as a legal person fully uh, in Wyoming. So the Wyoming LLC law allows for either member managed or algorithmically managed uh, their companies. 
However, an algorithmically managed DAO can only be formed if the smart contracts uh, underlying it are capable of updates or modifications. So this means that uh, Wyoming LLCs formed under the law will have to maintain some degree of centralization and human, human control. Um, moving forward, you don't have to disclose your smart contract, but the law requires that the smart contracts can be amended or editable. This can be a challenge for DAOs, in my opinion, because smart contracts are immutable. So this requirement can cause DAO to replace uh, the smart contract wholly from the bottom to the top, as I would like to say. Um, the law, the act also states that the records of the DAO can be examined by the authorities. So this actually means for me, in my opinion, that you will be under surveillance, such as other LLCs among the states. We also have Vermont. I would like to move forward with that. Um, you can you can register your DAO as blockchain-based LLCs. With this act, a DAO can enter into a legally binding contracts and other uh, legally legal affairs that a LLC can do. It also protects its owners, managers, participants from undesired liabilities. So it kind of limits the liability that you will have as a partner. As in Wyoming, it's kind of similar. Uh, LLC provisions will apply to these companies as well. You can govern your uh, DAO entirely or in part through blockchain technology. And so you can vote your actions by using blockchain-based smart contracts. Um, this, prov uh, this regulation also provides LLC-like liability protections to DAOs that register as such. However, the law is essentially an amendment the current Wyoming uh, LLC Act. So one have to look at the LLC Act in order to understand Vermont as well. And they're kind of similar. The amendments only kind of bring more, uh, more liabilities and obligations on DAOs in this manner. We also have Tennessee, but this is extremely similar to Wyoming law. So I, if you would, it's, it's, if it's okay with you, I would like to pass Tennessee. <laughs> Uh, maybe we can move forward with Marshall Islands. Um, they also recognize DAOs. They can they can only be established at nonprofit limited companies and memberships, and they can be registered on blockchain. So if you're looking looking to uh, establish an LLC, I would prefer for you to go to Wyoming or Vermont in this manner. Um, we have other countries such as Australia, but and several uh, Switzerland, but they don't have an legal uh, acknowledgement of DAOs yet. So they only move forward with their local regulations at this moment, such as uh, Turkey, as I spoke. Probably you would be recognized as a partnership under these uh, jurisdictions. So uh, long story short, I would prefer Wyoming and Vermont if you're seeking a legal entity and I would move forward with um, should you seek a legal entity? So we have some questions here, but I would like to, maybe when I talk, you can just gaze at them and see uh, if you would say yes or no to those questions as well. Just a second. Okay, thank you. Um, in case, if a DAO can be considered as an ordinary partnership, as Baton mentioned, partners are personally and fully liable for the debts of the partnership. So if you can be considered as an incorporated company, partners of DAO will only be liable for the amount of capital they provided. So if you, the question is this, should, you do, uh, should a DAO seek a legal entity? If you can bear those liabilities, and they are kind of personal, they can get your personal assets, and they can get your other properties you have if they have a claim. So uh, the point here is, would you like to risk your assets uh, by participating in a Dell, actually? So... Um, a legal entity shall ask themselves the question which you can see on the presentation. Maybe you can have a quick look and we can just assess this part while we are engaging questions and answers together. So I will just get back to this after uh, the presentation. 
I would like to talk about uh, the risks of having and not having a legal entity. So liability for members, as we talked, is always a risk. By becoming a legal entity, you can put forward the entity instead of individual, individual members. Uh, as I also mentioned before, if you don't have a legal entity, it is hard to enter into contract, uh, contractual relationships or participate in legal affairs, own property, open a bank account under the name of entity and etc. So if an entity uh, is not legally acknowledged, this can result in holding the funders or even participants of the DAO as solely and personally responsible for DAO's actions. What I mean by DAO's actions is voting, or the coding, or the smart contracts, uh, and etc. So by concluding a legal entity, this liability can shift from a real person to the entity itself. But please be aware that a partner or a founder can be liable up to the amount they provide to the entity as a capital. This, uh, this also prefers, uh, this also resembles that you will only be liable with the amount that you put uh, into the DAO. The real deal here is that even if you don't become a legal entity, at any claim or damage occurs from a third party against you or your DAO, the relevant jurisdiction may deem you as an ordinary partnership. So in a case where we think that uh, we don't want to become a legal entity, if a third party claims that we did a damage or a damage occurred because of uh, our actions, the jurisdiction can claim or deem us as partnership, which means that the partners uh, of the entity, the partnership, will be liable with their own uh, assets and own property if uh, it, the claim is not satisfied at any point. Moving forward with this. Um, another thing, another risk of not having a legal entity is that you cannot be deemed as a legal entity. You may not also pursue your rights or your claims your DAO will have. In my opinion, this issue is, of course, can be arising if you're working with third parties or if you will have any claims as an entity, but not as an individual. So um, the main risk of having a legal entity is the fact that with having a legal entity, various number of legal regulations and bureaucratic actions will be applicable towards the entity. For example, we can say if a DAO is registered as LLC, almost every legal uh, norm that is applicable to LLCs will also be applicable to DAOs. Also, registering your entity may cost you a few bucks, I would like to say. Um, I'm moving forward with this part. So how to create a legal entity for a DAO. If you want your DAO to be part of legal contracts, to employ people, to own assets, and to pursue its rights in courts, you need to create a legal entity for it. So this will make it clear to founders and participants what their liabilities are, and applicable law and regulations will be clear for you. And there will be no ambiguity about the DAO's legal status, which will provide much clarity and predictability for the entity and the partners as well. Uh, there are two main types of business entities in the United States. We talked about Wyoming and we talked about Vermont. So in order to create a DAO in Wyoming, the DAO must be registered. In addition, in order for the DAO to be governed by smart contracts and be managed by the members, a statement establishing how the DAO will be managed must be issued. So additionally, in order to register a DAO in Wyoming, one must have a Wyoming registered agent who meets the statutory requirements. So there will be a lot of documents, there will be a lot of roads to go down, uh, in my opinion. And if you want to create a legal entity, you may do so in either Wyoming or Vermont, both of which have similar requirements for LLC formation. And any individual, no matter where they are located, can start a DAO LLC uh, in the USA. So I actually, that's the uh, whole representation I had for you. Maybe we can move forward with the questions that uh, you ha may have, and we can just get back to the question and the most, most important part in my eyes, uh, the, the questions, the list we have here. Thanks, Asena. Thanks, Asena. Asena. Uh, if you guys have any questions, Thorsten, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. I think it's uh, it's good that we more or less start start talking about 
legal implications of stuff which we're doing. Um, uh, just perhaps kind of two questions or one question mainly uh, or observation. Um, this this uh, liability topic in itself mm -hmm. um, has 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 different dimensions in itself. So there is a tax liability which might kind of occur, um, and and which more or less has to be dealt with. Um, and the other question is actually kind of like lawful action um, of members of the DAO and the consequences out of that one. Yeah. So um, the LLC, my understanding is, is kind of orphaned and the tax liability lies actually still with the individual and the declaration has to be done that way. And it depends also on the um, recognition of the... Um, the, the country in which the person who is part of the DAO is actually um, tax resident. So, um, I, for example, I'm in the UK, uh, and the UK in itself for a while didn't recognize actually kind of the way a, a, an LLC was recognized in the US that sorted out now, but that might still be the case with other countries. So while, while I get it from the legal protection perspective, there are other questions to be answered. Do I do I see that correctly? So it's not just like, oh, do we should we do it or shouldn't we do it? Kind of, it looks like a good idea, but it also then means that by a sudden, you as an individual more or less have to deal with the IRS, for example, in the US, which you wouldn't have to do under normal circumstances. So while you're pointing now to to U US DAOs, what is the reason why you're dismissing? other structures are they just not appropriate i mean kind of like we're looking for example at the cardano foundation which is based in switzerland and for they're sure they actually don't... they're actually in general the same generally all jurisdictions would uh, deem adoa as partnerships in my opinion okay. that's why we didn't go move forward with those yeah. so they have to be recognized if they're opposed yeah, it's, to it, it's more like it's more like okay so it's the, the question then is kind of like where you have to pay tax and how do you get out of double taxation in that context yeah oh uh, well we actually did a taxation about <laughs> cryptos maybe but not specifically to a DAO. uh we did a proposal regarding that but i don't know about like should we talk about the taxation here in Botu? Uh, taxation is uh, a different and a, a topic that has to be uh, examined uh, more widely. Uh, we didn't really get into that stuff, uh, okay. but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a excellent question. question okay. and, uh, depending on the uh, member of a DAO or the and the where DAO is established. It changes the uh, tax consequences a lot. So uh, it really depends on the member of the DAO uh, and more individual and specific examination, legal examination shall be done in my opinion. Okay, okay. I get it. So all I wanted to say is kind of like this construct which, you're, which, which, which you might select through a DAO, even if it's put into a legal wrapper might still have some implications which are dependent effectively from the legal structure you're you're selecting right mm -hmm. yes. yeah so yeah. that's my only comment on that on on on, on that yeah, side yeah. <laughs> and the other one is do you have any experience or do you know of any cases where liabilities you see you even if you have a legal structure which is limiting liabilities of effectively the shareholders or the, the partners yeah. in a it doesn't mean that unlawful behavior in itself itself does 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 get the same level of protection. So if I, for example, I break the law, uh, let's say I break data privacy law as a DAO, mm -hmm. uh, and the regulator is breezing over me, then at the end of the day, there is there is still a liability which kind of like has to be recognized. Do you have any? And and that's a concrete case. Yeah, data privacy law in in in, in Europe uh, is quite prominent. So um and in that context kind of like um are there any cases how liability in that in that context is going to be expressed so for example the european union says you have to have a data privacy officer if you don't nominate one normally the 
the CEO of the of the legal entity is is liable. Uh, you had you kind of when you start creating legal entities in that case, someone will have to incorporate. Does that already embed some risks coming out of that? Uh, like I'm the one who is registering, for example, mm -hmm. uh, Wyoming uh, uh, LLC. Uh, great question. We didn't really uh, come across a case involving DAOs in this regard, uh, but the same, uh, the applicable rules and legislation for uh, a classic LLC or corporation or partnership will be uh, applicable to DAOs depending on how it's uh, qualified, how it's uh, considered. Yeah. Uh, just because it states that uh, this partner or this shareholder has, uh, has a limited liability it doesn't mean that uh, it cannot be overthrown. Uh, it can be uh, changed. Mostly in cases uh, where there is an uh, intention to avoid or uh, background the law itself, uh, then the in, in Turkish law, it's possible uh, to uh, retain that liability from the partner or uh, shareholder if it has to be done to be uh, fair. So it doesn't really give you a, a absolute protection in terms of liability. Can I ask the last question? And I just want to have your opinion on that one. Mm -hmm. DAOs in itself can have different um, forms and shapes and for sure also sizes. Mm -hmm. So um, blockchain in itself, uh, and there are a number of DAOs which more or less kind of constitute membership normally by uh, you acquire an NFT and therefore you get certain rights or the number of certain tokens in itself gives you certain voting rights and so on. So assuming for a minute that uh, that is recognized as part as, as part of a criteria to fill, to be fulfilled to have partnership uh, in in. Um, mm -hmm. in in that in that context um do you do you have any any cases where actually the size of the organization is becoming so big i, I mean then obviously not obviously so the question goes in the direction like uh, there is more and more legislation coming out which says you have to uh, uh, do an kyc and aml background check just more or less for lawfulness or for certain things. It's quite easy kind of to buy effectively an NFT, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that you effectively know the individual behind that. Uh, might mm -hmm. just be an avatar. Um, uh, do you have any insights on how far that is conflicting um, law in the sense of that you have to have certain level of identity verification as part of partnership? um yes uh, i can answer that question by uh, giving you an example uh, turkish uh, turkish authority called uh, financial uh, masak uh, which is the leading authority which in, uh, investigates financial crimes financial action task force and etc mm -hmm. uh, and an amendment uh, were an amendment was made uh, last year regarding crypto asset service providers uh, such as Binance uh, and other uh, service providers and they became uh, obligated to uh, done KYC and A AML uh, verification uh, but right now Turkey doesn't really focus uh, focus on DAOs because the market size and economical uh, effects are uh, limited considering uh, other uh, blockchain technologies and uh, derivative uh, works. Uh, but uh, in near future, uh, we think that uh, DAOs will be subject to KYC, AML and other relevant uh, legislation. Uh, Turkish authorities and uh, as far as I know, other states uh, authorities don't really like the uh, uh, anonymous uh, side of this technology so they want to know who is behind it
Thank you. I, I, I thought the same, but I just good that you confirm that. Yeah. Yeah, I, we think we, it will come in the future, but the main point here is uh, actually for us right now is the liabilities of the members. So, well, I would say a DAO can lose potential members who would otherwise support DAO, but worry that memberships would put their assets at risk. So that's another question to be arisen, I think. Maybe. Um, uh, Members would be like, well, if I'm going to be liable for my assets of my own, if someone does a wrong and they cannot find a person to take this claim to, and they just find me as a partner in the DAO, then what should I do? It's like a question to be asked. So that's why we actually prefer, I wouldn't say prefer, but you should seek out, you should eliminate and evaluate uh, the questions here and, and just decide on whether you would take a risk or not. But uh, also not taking a risk uh, comes with such liabilities, documentations and KYCs and other stuff that we talked also. So this is actually a thing that you would have to evaluate at the end. Uh, there was a question in the chat. Not a question, but uh, uh, somebody wrote Panama. Uh, we know that Panama uh, had a bill uh, regarding crypto assets, blockchain and DAO. Uh, but as far as we know, uh, that bill was under consideration and the, the uh, high court was uh, examining the a bill so we didn't really give a uh, much space in that ah. Maybe we can add if it's a requirement we can add i think yeah. but there was a high court uh, decision pending on that bill whether it will be and uh, enforceable or not okay do we have any other questions Um, I think I can ask a question if nobody else has one. Uh -huh. um, so part, if we're not uh, taking a look at incorporating in any way, we are most likely to be evaluated as partnerships. And that sounds very general to me, um, especially in terms of a, a new member of a DAO. Let's say I buy that NFT and it gives me some sort of voting power. Uh, that puts me under liability for something that I don't really have any control over, it seems. Uh, so with big DAOs, especially if you do buy that token, which has governance or voting power, does it matter uh, if I actually go ahead and vote on anything? Uh, no. I just hold that token and I'm, I'm maybe liable. Yes. I think it depends. Well, well, no. Well, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> I think it depends on the case, and it depends on the wronging. Well, if you voted and the decision made someone uh, well occurred a damage to someone, I don't know how. Uh, well, I um, think about the cases where it can be. Um, but for now, I don't have any ideas. But it, it can come to me in the future. <laughs> But for now, I think if a case or a lawsuit was uh, arising against you, it will depend on, they would seek who did it, who voted on it, who was behind it, where did this opinion come from, and etc. Hmm. So if, for example, even if DAO itself, uh, even if it hurts its partners itself or some partners, some may come to founders or the code writers or the smart contract builders and etc. in my opinion. So it actually depends on the case. I mean, um, we did some similar work at DLT kind of looked into this uh -huh. and I will post a link here quickly to the website and it, it would be work and, uh, quite nice kind of to connect. So we, we, we found an institute effectively for blockchain politics and law Mm -hmm. um, and there are some there. Is, I know that there is one one document still outstanding, uh, which is specifically looking also at those. 
the, the point in, in the US, there is a president's case, as far as I know, where actually it it is not automatically that because you have effectively um, a token of a DAO that you more or less kind of have immediately reliability. Um, but um, you, you might be in a situation that effectively you have uh -huh. to defend yourself rather than yeah. that you're out. So yeah. that comes with a certain risk. So even if you're found not guilty, you might mm -hmm. incur some legal fees, just more or less to prove that. Mm -hmm. So exactly. the question, so the question in itself is just like, um, if you would have to protect yourself, um, how would you do that? If the DAO in itself doesn't seek legal, 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 legal protection, it might even be kind of something which is sensible in a sense of creating a legal structure around yourself to to protect yourself. Um, from 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 uh, uh, any any kind of consequences, yeah. So there is there is not just the side on the DAO side; it's also the side on the individual side, uh, the, yes. the holder and membership could actually be through a legal structure also. Mm -hmm. Well, in my opinion, some partners, even when they are voting, they may not know the consequences of the actions as well. So yeah. they must they must prove that they didn't know but they have they still have a voting right so that's the actually the main confusion of this entity and i don't think a, a jurisdiction or a court <laughs> would understand the uh that he's not an expertise on this topic i wouldn't i i wouldn't think they would recognize that and understand that at some level that's yeah, I, think, I think the, the main challenge comes out of the fact that we don't have a classical legal, legal representative as such yes. in a DAO, uh, do you have effectively a consensus mechanism? Yes. And as you're part of that one, it becomes really difficult kind of to prove that um, It's you... very hard to prove that you can you cannot say that, oh, I didn't know, but I still voted, or I didn't have any opinion or on I didn't, it. I didn't vote, but I didn't know either. The question in itself then yes. also might be, could you have known or did you know yes. and you just didn't do the right thing? Yes, yeah. well, so, that's, the, that's the main risks we were trying to uh, point out here. Yeah. So well. it's, 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 let's put it this way for, for someone, and, and there, the, the consequence in itself was not just a financial one, it could also be a legal one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, kind of like if you're breaking law, some of the consequences in itself, normally it's a, it's a financial burden on you. Yes. But uh, there is also legal liability in, yes, from, from in a, a criminal, criminal law criminal law perspective, yeah, that's true. and that could be something which is, um, yeah, something you would want to avoid if possible. Mm -hmm. yeah, so mm -hmm. that's I mean, why hmm. there 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 are a number of requirements coming in, and unfortunately, some of the law which comes in is not necessarily kind of specific for the. For the blockchain space and doesn't kind of take up the innovation it just looks at it pretty sometimes in a pretty dull way and say okay it, it, it compares it to cases which are slightly differently positioned yeah so uh, an llp has effectively kind of like a, a something like an, 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 an known shareholder table in most of the cases um, and, and that actually then means, okay, the voting power is clear, the people in itself who have to vote is clear, the procedures in that context is clear, and with DAOs that is also slightly different. doesn't mean that it works less um, um, effective, but the liabilities in itself are not omitted just due to the fact that we say we have a DAO and it's decentralized that, that autonomous. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Yeah. So in doubt, in doubt, you are, you're, 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 you have to prove your innocence rather than you're innocent because you didn't know. Uh, that's kind of, I think, the the, the default position. Yes, that's the hardest part. That's the hardest thing to bear. And I feel like, like none of the DAO token holders are aware of this. And it's going yes, to be an issue. That was actually big DAOs. The point. Yeah, well, I mean, the point is don't do anything stupid, number one. Number two, be aware of the law. And that's mm -hmm. kind of probably the hardest because in some They're cases, that's, 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 that's not as easy as it sounds. Yeah. So, 
um, if you, in a simple, simple example, if you have just one member of the DAO, which, for example, sits in the European Union and who is negatively affected by what the DAO is doing, uh, in effectively the full force of the data privacy law of the European Union comes onto you, which says, oh, you did some business in the European Union. Do you have a data privacy officer? You have to buy the law even if you're interacting with someone in the EU from outside. So, and and this kind of things are becoming actually the real risk because the penalties from regulators in that context can be quite significant. Yeah. So, um, and, and, and might, and might, uh, um, might actually kind of um, prohibit and, and, and wider adoption of this kind of structures um, specifically in a corporate environment because the risks which are associated with it are not yet fully understood. Yeah. Thank well, you, Thorsten. Hmm? Uh, could we get in some I'm... more questions as yeah, well? Sure. Robert yeah. had uh, his hand up. Sorry, I said up. That's fine. I was just going to say, uh, I forgot. <laughs> I was going to say, it's also hard to find uh, a party who occurred the damage if you're like, it's a worldwide entity anyway. So it's hard to find a contact, I would like to say, and sue them in a jurisdiction they are also. Well, we're talking about risks, but there are also some uh, back ways that Adele can uh, maybe avoid some legal structures as well okay if there are other questions we can talk about that Hi there. uh good morning it's pretty early in the morning so this is not going to be a particularly lucid sort of question um but i also joined in this room just slightly uh midway point so this may have already been answered or not I just want to go back to basics and just ask you from a legal perspective um, to define a DAO and also what is the problem being solved by them? I'm not saying I, yeah, this is just a question on definition from a legal standpoint. Uh, there is not a uniform uh, definition for DAOs in terms of law at least not in turkey uh, actually in turkey there is uh, no legislation specific to uh, daos or any of the court decisions or etc uh, daos offer uh, to solve uh, the shortcomings of classic corporations uh, for example foreseeability uh, accountability and etc. Uh, also, uh, blockchain technology and smart contracts uh, makes it possible for the members of DAO to see, follow, audit the transactions uh, of the DAO and uh, keep up with the records. Uh, also, it has a great uh, crowdfunding. Uh, potential uh, people all across the globe can uh, invest small capitals to raise a great amount of capital uh, within minutes mm. so um i know there's no legal uh, generally good legal definition of DAOs at the moment but um <clears throat> more interested to know what is your definition of a DAO? uh your from a your legal perspective how would you attempt to try and define what a DAO is uh, from legal uh, legal standpoint uh, DAOs tend DAOs tend to be considered as ordinary partnerships uh, an ordinary partnership uh, is a, a partnership where two or more people come together to pursue pursue one uh, business uh, in in to gain profit and etc. to share the profits and loss of a business. Uh, it uh, generally applies for uh, for-profit DAOs. Uh, it's not applicable to non-profit DAOs, but from legal standpoint, point, uh, since there is no 
um, definition of DAOs uh, generally in, in the world, uh, ordinary partnership comes uh, to take over. Okay. Um, this Just following on a little bit more to some other points that Thurston I uh, sort of raised as I was listening to him, largely push back on this too, by the way, um, but largely the purpose of trying to come up with a legal structure is to provide one, an interface to uh, existing, existing uh, legal systems and governance structures of uh, nation states. Uh, the other reason is to provide certainty in terms of how to um, negotiate and enter into agreements between these entities. Um, so a larger, large part of the discussion, like say, for example, the privacy, uh, who is the person responsible uh, in the DAO for privacy considerations. One of the projects that's attempt out in the Ethereum space that's attempting to solve that standardization perspective is something called DAO Star. Uh, and this is where uh, the DAO can basically register themselves on chain as a contact point who takes on certain roles and where their responsibilities lie. Um, so uh, that would be something that would be very useful to help define legally and deal with things like KYC, AML, um, which would also help to um, act as a registration or act, um, point for DAOs. Uh, therefore, also enabling you to solve things like to enter into trust frameworks for digital identity and other related concerns like that on the KYC. So one, was, one DAO, for example, can say that, yes, I've proved who Robert is, um, but uh, uh, that means nothing unless there's some other sort of overarching mutual agreement that entities are entering into to agree to um, accept these assertions. Um, one of the other things, and this is more on a legal point of view, um, what constitutes a DAO, um, what's the importance of constitutions in uh, a part of a legal structure for a DAO? Uh, again, as I said, since there is no definition uh, for DAO, we cannot say that uh, from legal point, legal standpoint, that if this happens, if the these requirements are met, it's a DAO. It's, there is no definition of DAO, so there uh, is no uh, requirement that we can say uh, it works vice versa in this uh, context. Uh, for KYC and AML uh, procedures uh, obligations, uh, again, it's important to first define uh, what category DAO falls into. Uh, if we determine that, depending on DAO's nature and uh, applicable jurisdiction, then we can uh, examine who is responsible for KYC and AML obligations. Yeah, I agree. And to addition to that, even if we do not seek a legal entity or a DAO wouldn't become a legal entity in most jurisdictions, if there is a claim or a lawsuit against them, they will be like deemed as a partnership. So what we're saying here is maybe uh, instead of dealing with being be deeming as a partnership and being liable, all the partners or the members uh, being liable, towards any claim, we can maybe limit this and just uh, put a position and just swift uh, switch this to the entity itself rather than the members to it. So if, if, in my opinion, if a lawsuit was brought against a DAO or its members, everyone is liable with their assets. So actually, this is the main point, in my opinion, maybe I, <laughs> Well, maybe that's your question or maybe that answered some of your question. Uh, I think the main thing I was trying to get to is um, we know that the current legal systems around the world don't know what a DAO is, more or less, yes. is what we're saying. So we treat them as a, a general partnership. Cool. Um, so what I guess my set of questions here, we're framing um, what does the future look like? So first of all, how do we define uh, legally what it, what 
what do we think a legal structure looks like for a DAO? What are we trying to solve for, i.e. the problem? You know, why do we need a DAO legal structure versus, say, um, all, versus all the other existing type of legal structures out there from charities to legal <laughs> partnerships to um, incorporated societies, all those sort of different things. So why do we need a new structure? Um, one of the answers to that might be, well, what does a, um, you know, a pan-jurisdictional organization look like that isn't a large pan-national corporation? Um, the And therefore, what sort of, um, how do you standardize a DAO um, in a way that uh, governments around the world or different jurisdictions around the world can relate to it? Um, that's well, a future looking sort of thing. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Well, the main point, it actually falls out of the scope when we talk about partnerships. But at the end of the day, a jurisdiction would probably try to fit a DAO to a legal structure that they seem appropriate for them as well. So this actually conflicts with the purpose of the DAO as well. That's true. But uh, we're talking about some stuff about member wise and how they would think and how would they participate or would they affect their membership uh, or contributions to Dell as well. Uh, so I understand your point and the Dell is actually the, the point of a Dell is being decentralized, not being uh, regulated under a government and etc. Uh, but at the end of the day, if something happens, uh, the jurisdiction would probably have to look for someone who is liable. But Tuan, maybe you have some stuff to add to that. Not really, as I use okay. some stuff. Well, we <laughs> talked, maybe, yeah, we talked about how DAOs are like the advantages and disadvantages before. So I think at the end, uh, the jurisdictional stuff and legal structure uh, regarding DAOs are kind of not in their nature, but at some point they are doing some work and they can also cause damage or they should be liable uh, regarding their actions because they because they're they're taking actions and they have conclusions in the world. So that's why we were kind of trying to examine and evaluate where and how and when we should seek a legal entity. I think they can maybe uh, prefer some protections towards DAO, but uh, I don't know. Well, maybe in the near future, and I don't know how it will be regulated. Wyoming tried to do uh, some regulations, but it is still, uh, it is the LLCs and all the laws are applicable to DAOs as well. So I don't think they are contributing any protections or uh, privile privileges to DAOs for this at this point. But this is the, uh, the main topic here is again comes to liability, the members and uh, the entity itself. Thank you. I'll, I'll leave the floor open for others. We can have one more question, then uh, it's, it's late, actually. <laughs> uh, I think Curtis and Thorsten uh, uh, had questions. Curtis, would you like to ask? Or Thorsten, would you to add anything? Uh, mine may not have a, a tangible answer it's you know an ongoing conversation as as everything with DAOs is but you made a, a specific comment about an organization that's for profit uh so if a DAO were to build out tokenomics model uh and create a DAO governance token would that then be considered a security based on the fact that it may potentially right increase value or for profit in the future uh, it might. Uh, there's an uh, there's a test called Harvey test. Uh, it's spelled like this. Uh, uh, SAC uh, apply this test to determine whether uh, a token or something is secret or not. Uh, if that token you talked about. Um, 
falls in the scope of uh, how it has, then uh, it will be most probably considered as security and the relevant applicable legislation regarding securities uh, will probably be applicable to that DAO and token as well. Got it, thank you. Yeah, I've been hearing rumors that the Halley test doesn't fully encapsulate or answer these. So they are looking at building out a new test, mm -hmm. but I'm very curious. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, you are right. It's a uh, quite old uh, test dating like uh, mid 19s or something like that. Uh, also, you are right. Uh, this does this test doesn't really uh, answers and uh, fulfills the gap uh, regarding crypto assets and their uh, nature of security uh, but we are not aware of any new test that has been uh, publicly uh, shared or known thank you curtis uh if you could take uh, one last remark from Torsten and then wrap it up, would that be okay? Lovely. Yeah, great discussion, guys. Um, just kind of perhaps a little bit self promotion and, and it helps in this context. We did quite a lot of legal work around these topics. Um, there is a navigator which you can freely sign up to on DLT360.io. I will put that in the chat. And then you just have to uh, register and then you will go into the navigator as a legal section which also is to kind of perhaps giving some of the answers um, of the discussion which we had so um, just as a second tool perhaps for help um, I will post a link here um, so that you that you can 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 get to that that would be thanks. great thank you thanks Torsten uh, Botuan Sena thank you guys for your time uh, walking Thank us you, through guys. the legal frameworks. Uh, we're going to be hosting, I think, four more of these sessions, maybe in uh, town halls, maybe standalone. Uh, MJ, if you could drop in uh, a link to our Twitter, if you could follow us there, uh, you could uh, you will get up to date knowledge on when and how we will be hosting these sessions. We got a lot more to cover on the legal legal side, uh, taxation. Uh, how do we launch tokens? But we had, I think, thirteen total topics, and we're yes, and we're working through them one by one. We're at the third or fourth one now. So, looking forward to the next session, guys. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys.